I picked this as a something that I wanted to explore. You see, communication is fundamental to the way we lead. It's fundamental to you know our you know basically the the way that we show up, our leadership, the way we you know help others, the way we connect. I think it's fundamentally very important. And I mean, it's fundamentally very important. Hi, hi, Martin. Welcome. Apologies for the little uh, right. issues with coming on here. Uh, we sort of little learning how to to do this. Right. Okay, trying to sort of manage a few different things. So basically, I've just started to. So, so uh, Martin is one of my guests. Martin Samarad, uh, uh, who is uh, one, a a coach in communication. And uh, thank you for joining us, Martin. Really appreciate that. Thank you for bearing with us uh, with the technology. And we have as well, we have Thomas join us. Thomas oh, Ford, thank you for your patience. I know there was a bit of uh, a few things, but learning how to use this platform. So thank you for, for joining us. Uh, hopefully you, hold on, yeah. hold on, hold on. I'll speak. Uh, yeah, we can okay. hear you. you now. Okay. Yeah, awesome. okay, great. Okay, thank you for bearing us. This is interesting, right? The number of things that we had uh, before we got to this call is quite amazing. So this is something to learn as when we are online, when we're presenting, uh, there's all sorts of mishaps that can obviously happen. But hey, we learn from the experiences, right? So just starting off, just basically talking about communication mastery and wanted to you know, use this particular event we have today just to sort of have a, a little exploration of what, you know, what is communication mastery? And something i used to say as well that as a coach in communication for the communication the mastery of it i'm not saying that i am a master i am indeed be wanting to become more masterful in the in the art of communication you know be it to in the way i help my clients uh, in their co corporate clients corporate leaders to help them to you know, communicate with more confidence and so it's about becoming more and more masterful, being in making improvements. But the thing is, communication is not just about learning a technique, you know, how to be more confident, for example, in our posture, but it really is, it's the person within, because it doesn't matter how good your communication skills are, but if you have difficulty in terms of being able to communicate, then that's obviously a, a struggle. Uh, Actually, as I'm thinking now, it may be that we have problems with other people joining this particular session as well. So give me a second. I uh, just want to see if I can. Because if they, if you're having difficulties joining the call today. Okay. 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 So they are, it is being streamed. Uh, let's see. Okay. okay, great. So uh, obviously something we're learning here. I'd like to, I'm, I'm very uh, honored to have uh, Martin Samarad and Thomas Vitorka uh, with us today. Uh, thank you for joining in this little adventure of uh, exploring uh, not just the technology here, but particularly as well, the conversations that we're having on communication mastery. And uh, I'd like to maybe invite you to introduce yourselves. Uh, maybe Martin, you can start us off uh, to just tell us who you are and what you do as a coach. All right. Thank you very much for having me. So as mentioned, I'm a coach. I specialize in communication, but not, not only communication, but I also enjoy helping people with their long term goals and going for them. So that's my main main hobbies in coaching if I can put it this way. And also I'm working in marketing. So I have background in marketing and I do communication and long-term goals. And I'm from Czech Republic, which I'm joining you right now from. Yes, I appreciate that. Thank you, Martin, for the introduction. Welcome. Uh, Thomas, over to you. Uh, so my name is Thomas Vitorka. I am a life and performance coach. I'm also a business and sales mentor. I specialize in working with um, ambitious professionals and entrepreneurs, helping them uh, maximize their performance, uh, be more confident and effective. Brilliant. Thank you, Thomas. Thank you for that. Thank you, Martin. So I think the, you know, I think it's, it's pretty amazing, interesting that 
the communication as a topic, I'm generally very interested in it because I, you know, have been learning for all this time about how to be a better communicator. You know, at even times I didn't know, you know, even have the confidence to be able to speak up, to be able to, you know, uh, even convey an idea that was very simple, and it and it all rooted in in communication. And I think uh, if we be our leaders, we have to be able to communicate effectively, and and that. And one particular skill I would say that we absolutely essential is the ability, I think, to to listen. And I don't mean just using the ears to hear, but it's really, I think, using the whole our senses, all the senses available to us, the whole body, the the eyes, you know, our sense of sight, our of feeling of the emotions of the other person, all that are very key. Let me ask you. Uh, each of you internally what your reflections in terms of what communication brings to mind for you as you work with your clients thomas you can start us off well for us as coaches i think communication is is everything that's the that's the channel through which we make change and difference in people's lives and uh, uh you know i've been coaching now for over 10 years and studying personal development for for many years before that i think the longer i coach the more i appreciate how, how important communication is and communication is not just about you know talking and listening um the, as with anything the longer you spend time with something you start noticing and appreciating the nuances in whether it's a craft or knowledge and you know for me when i speak or communicate with my clients you know, over the years, you develop this kind of acuity to, to listen for the tone of how they say things, listen to, or paying attention to the words they're choosing to describe yeah. some something. And it can tell you so much. You can read sort of so much between the lines where it's helping you understand how they think, how they feel, yeah. what their blind spots may be, what, they, what they're trying to say, what they're trying to hide. And... Um, and you know, communication is, is, and of course, one part of it is what is coming at you, or what they're trying to communicate. So we're trying to pay attention to that and, and understand what they're saying, but also making sure that what you communicating, communicating is being um, understood. I've learned a long time ago that there are three levels of clarity in communication. The first one is to make sure that you're clear that you understand what the person is saying. The second level of clarity is to make sure that they are clear and understand what you are saying. And the third level of clarity is that um, you are clear that you understand that they understand what you're trying to say and what's being communicated. And so we all know that, I'm sure it happened to all of us, that sometimes we try to say something, we choose not in the wrong words, but just like not the right words. And there's a fire on the roof, you know, whether it's in personal relationships or whether it could be, you know, in, in corporate setting, in a meeting, you say things maybe not quite the right way and it could be misunderstood or could be kind of used in the wrong way. So I think learning how to appreciate communication and understand communication and develop communication is such a critical skill for anybody who wants to be effective in mm. in life, frankly, whether it's personal or professional relationships. Absolutely. Thank you, for, Thomas, for that. I, I love these sort of three levels of clarity that you talk about there. That's actually essential, and I certainly resonate with that. And, and Martin, you are nodding as well. What, what do you? What perspective do you have to share? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I couldn't agree more to all what you said. That there is one thing that I approach communication as well or one point of view that I also have that I found out that it's super important for me and for people that I'm teaching communication yeah. is how you approach the person and how you approach the communication. So if you come into the communication and you only want to present yourself or you only are following some goal, then you shut to what the person is communicating with you or you, you are not able to comprehend 
to whole the wholeness of the con con conversation if you only have your mindset on something so for me being open and trying to understand the person that's in front of me and having maybe even the gratitude to be with the person in there mm -hmm. helps me enormously to understand the person and as thomas said to be able to feel the slight nuances in the tonality in what they are trying to they are what they are trying to say or what are they trying to hide it for me it's how do i approach it and what's set in my mind that i want to get out of that conversation so being open and being understanding what the person is about who is that and yes that's very powerful what you just shared there, Martin. Uh, thank you for that. I, I think I resonate with that. I think the the understanding aspect, it's not just, oh yeah, I, I, to understand them, but actually more important, I think there's an intention. It's the, in, so I think for me, I think it's a case of in, the intention to want to understand, but not to, not in a way like, oh, look, I want to understand, but it's more of like just taking it all in and yeah. being really present. So mm -hmm. not like driven by an ego as such, but just like, look, I'm connecting i want to understand i may not understand everything but i'd like to be as real as possible with that person and and this could be as well i think within a one-to-one -one conversation it could be one to a few like in this situation here or it could be one to many if i'm if, if you know you speak into it doing public speaking you speak into a group of people whether virtually or on stage or whatever i think there's there's something to be said about being able to have well, having that intention to communicate and communicate you know people talk about authenticity right but being able to connect and be real with everyone because the moment when let's say you put on an act like even for a moment people can well say see it but also they can feel it right yeah any, any thoughts nice. to add as well further to that yeah totally yeah yeah um, and in terms of the you know the work that let's say you know, we, these coaches work with our clients, I and mean, particularly those who are maybe in the you know, leaders, lead the, you know, organizations, um, I'd like to really turn the topic. What is a key challenge that these people encounter right, within their work? And often, you know, maybe work with yourselves as, as coaches, work with us as coaches. What is a key challenge? And I think one particular challenge I would say that I've encountered with the people I work with is it, on the surface, it's things like decision making, right? I mean, how to make a decision, but also how to explain that decision or, and communicate that decision. And sometimes just because often, you know, how often is it some of my clients, they say, oh, a decision has been made by others they feel powerless to actually influence the outcome or indeed to uh to provide any you know to, to input uh to that decision being made and then the communication of that decision is here decision has been made this is what you're going to get this is what's happening and i think that is often where people feel well hang on what just happened this is affecting me well as you know these leaders these people particularly those who are in middle management maybe they've got people who you know they, they've got this this c-suite there maybe and then they've got people their teams below to, to manage and being that middle is a very challenging space to manage the communication particularly when there are communications or messages that come to these viewers these these leaders who and they, they feel powerless and they don't know how to communicate it properly to say and influence that communication quite a complicated area uh, uh, from the experience I've as you've seen, but what about yourselves uh, to share, Thomas? Uh, yeah. So I have a I have a profound insight for you, which is which is not Very so well. profound. But what I've learned is, you know, as as kind of contrary to what I've said earlier, where there's so many nuances to communication that you can learn and 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 use to be more effective communicator. I actually find that the, the most common error in communication is that people don't communicate. And I always, whether it's a relationship thing or whether it's a you know work work dynamic, a work relationship um, issue, 
the first advice or rule I have for people is to over communicate because you guys probably know this from working with your clients. I know this from working with my clients, but also I know it with my clients, with their experience, with their, uh, either with themselves or with their, um, uh, like a team is that as most people are keen to talk when things are going well, let me give you the updates. And, you know, we, we uh, double the sales and of course we want, you know, it's easy to share the good news, but when things get tough, when there is some kind of friction problem, misunderstanding, irritation, a gossip, you name it. What most people do is that they shut down especially if they need help or if they are struggling with something. And, um, and I know this when I, when I don't hear from my clients, when I know that I should have, or um, even when my clients tell me what their team is, is kind of holding back, not communicating, it's usually when things are not going well. Yes, some people are just really good at putting their head down and working through things and so on, but so many things could be resolved, so many problems could be resolved and prevented just by communicating or even over communicating because the issue with lack of communication is that we we allow too much space for imagination because we as you know humans we need to can understand the narrative understand the issue understand what's going on and if we don't have the information we fill them in with their imagination which is usually more on the catastrophic side and more on the negative side so we you know horror stories and people are out there to get us and the boss is plotting against us the team is lazy they don't, they don't care they don't respect me you know whatever we can make up where if if uh, leaders are watching this or anyone who is you know people in a relationship encourage communication um make sure that it's understood and it's that it's understood that it's welcomed that it's a way to resolve things, that people are not going to be bothered by you communicating, other people's communicating, just establishing a free communication channels and welcome communication channels can prevent so much. And I know that this sounds so simple, but anybody who is listening to this, they can probably think of quite a few examples or maybe the situation at work where the communication is just you know, not as not as good as it as it should be, and so even yeah. for corporate setting, um, establishing regular meetings that are, or, or segments in regular meetings that are just hey okay now let's stop, let's bring up the things that people want to say what's working what's not working and so on having having some kind of agenda yeah. structure for those meetings. Yeah, that's a powerful share. Yeah. Very, very powerful. Thank you, Thomas, for that. Yeah, you, actually, you, when you're speaking, you brought to my, brought, well, I, I had in my mind there was a particular quote which I absolutely love from George Bernard Shaw, and it, something goes along the lines of the biggest illusion with communication is that it took place. Or something to those thoughts, right? Sometimes wow. we think, yeah, we communicate. We already told it, but then we have just because we had that conversation in our head, thinking, yeah, we communicated, doesn't mean that we necessarily did communicate. <laughs> And, and nobody yep. is actually able to read minds that affect me. So that's a very powerful thing. Yeah, yeah, nice one. Martin, yeah, Martin. Thank you, Thomas. Martin. Yeah, I love the idea of over communication at the like home setting, even at work setting, because like as Thomas said, people usually shut down when something's wrong. And the idea of over communication might be like overwhelming for someone, maybe not to overwhelm the other person that I'm telling everything for two, three, four times. But the idea that we shut down when something's wrong. So over communicating at that moment means communicating in normal, like normal frequencies. So for me, doing this step out of the comfort zone when something's wrong is super important i'm talking from my experience at the moment because at the company we have this policy of being open not being judgmental and having this free communication channel and it's it's awesome because you feel safe and you feel that you can tell everything and you can find with your supervisor you can find the way how to solve it yeah. and i'm going to do an idea that not that no judgment space is super important as well and people usually are not very good at not being judgmental 
we all think of ourselves that we are like judgment free and we are not judging anyone but when really get to that you find out that many people are very judgmental and they they just don't know that they are judgmental so that's something quite hard to communicate but i feel that creating that non, not not judgmental place and open communication channels are two super important things to work on yeah absolutely nice. i think that's a very powerful thing thank you martin for that yeah and i was thinking as well that you know, to what you said about no judgment it's one thing as well to certainly not judge other people but we can be very harsh judges of ourselves and if we are harsh judges of ourselves then that's going to affect our ability to communicate right i mean but then it, you know it, it's absolutely important to i think to be aware of how we are but to to judge ourselves and even though we're not judging other people we're trying not to judge other people it also can hamper this ability to communicate i think that's a very powerful thing um i want to see as if well as if, if there's any excuse me any questions that are from our uh, people who are on joining and i'm going to just flip over to have a look to see if there's anything there give me a second uh as i say technology permitting <laughs> let's see i don't see if there's anything right now Yeah, I can't see anything just now in terms of in terms of any questions right now. Okay, great. So I just like to maybe finish off here and by saying, you know, I think there's communication is clearly a huge topic. And we we've only just spent a, the best part of half an hour or so just dipping in dipping into it and just exploring just some of the things that come to mind as we're speaking but clearly this is a topic that is not just of interest but i think is hugely powerful in being able to refine to become aware of and and because if we can communicate more effectively as leaders you know we can help people we can connect with people we can help them develop we can share news we can have those difficult conversations as well as share great news right um all these different things i think it's hugely important whether you're you know a, a leader in a company whether you are an entrepreneur uh if you, you know you, you are working with customers clients i think that's hugely important I mean, and as well don't forget as well you know our people in our own personal lives our family and the people that we come across in everyday life uh, i'd like to you know i think conclude here and then I really thank yourself martin and thomas for for joining on this little exploratory uh conversation and you know with the uh trials that we've experienced with the technology and i'm going to be real and i'm going to talk about this particular experience uh i have you know this is all part of a learning journey and i think there's been great certainly to the point that you've shared some amazing um insights on communication from your standpoint and i think this is a uh, something that certainly we'd love to be good to great to continue at some point uh so for those of you who are watching one uh, maybe interested in the work that we do then uh there's obviously uh, we can all be found on linkedin both martin and thomas are on linkedin uh i'll share well they, they are details are on the linkedin uh, uh event details there so i'll um thank you for everyone for joining in i hope that there were some useful insights that you can take on and reflect on uh, on your journey to become more effective communicators and uh whether with the technology permitting we'll see you next time see you soon thank you Bye. great to have you thanks thank martin you. thanks thomas Bye. take care for having take care, care.